People know the Jordan River for its history and the way it twists and turns. For centuries, the Jordan River has carried many mysteries, and again something terrifying happened this time. Many people believe it is a sign of the end of the world. So what do the scientists say? Stay tuned to the video till the end to find out more about this scary discovery. The Jordan River starts in the Jordan Valley and flows through a variety of landscapes. It has been a source of political tension and is a major route for millions of birds to migrate each year. According to the Bible, the Israelites crossed the Jordan River to get away from being slaves. This statement makes me wonder how wide the Jordan River is at its widest point if the Israelites were able to cross it. At its widest point, the Jordan River is 15 miles wide and it is about 223 miles long. Mount Hermon, which is on the border between Syria and Lebanon, is where the Jordan River starts. The main rivers that feed into the Jordan River are the Hasbani, the Baniyas, and the Dan. The water for these three rivers comes from Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. The three rivers finally come together in the Hula Valley in northern Israel. History of Jordan River Before it was called the Jordan River, people called it the Olon. The Greeks gave this name to the river, but it was later changed to Nar al-Shariat, which in Arabic means watering place. The Jordan River is important in many religions, and it is said that Jesus Christ was baptized in it. The Bible says that when the Israelites tried to get away from being slaves in Egypt, they crossed the dangerous Jordan River. The Jordan River has also been a place of exploration. During the 1800s, well-known explorers like Christopher Costigan, John McGregor, William Francis Lynch, and Thomas Howard Molyneux spent a lot of time on the river. Many years ago, Israel, Jordan, and Syria have all been fighting over the waters of the Jordan River. The river's water quality has gone down because of these problems and because the area around the river isn't well regulated. Also, sewage, agricultural waste, and salty springs have been dumped into the river without any rules. The Jordan River is 223 miles long, but it flows for less than this distance. It only goes 123 miles from where it starts to where it ends at the Dead Sea because it turns and winds. The Jordan River begins at Mount Hermon and flows through northern Israel before emptying into the Sea of Galilee. From there, it flows out of the Sea of Galilee and separates Israel from the West Bank, which is controlled by Israel. Lastly, it flows through the Zur floodplain in Jordan. After going through the Zur, the Jordan River forms a delta and flows into the Dead Sea. The Hasbani River, the Baniyas River, and the Dan River are the three main rivers that flow into the Jordan. But the Jordan River has other important streams that feed into it. These are The Jordan Valley is an important part of the East African Rift System, which goes from Turkey to the Red Sea and then to Eastern Africa. The Jordan Valley used to be six miles wide, but now it is only three miles wide. It ends at the Sea of Galilee. In the southern part of the valley, the land around the Jordan River can be up to 3,000 feet higher than the river itself. Because of how high it is, the walls around it are steep and rocky. In the southern part of the Jordan Valley, the Jordan River has cut a gorge through a basalt wall. After this gorge, the river flows into the Sea of Galilee on the northern shore. This lake is in charge of how fast the river flows. After leaving the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River flows through a plain called the Gar. The Gar is full of rocky towers and pinnacles that form deep valleys that make the area look like the surface of the moon. Also, the Jordan Valley has a floodplain called the Zur, which is made up of fields that are watered. Because the Zur often floods, the government has built dams along the Jordan River to stop the flooding. At the end of the Jordan Valley, there is a large delta. But what significance of the Jordan River in the Bible? The Jordan River is mentioned in a roundabout way in Genesis 13, when Lot and Abraham are dividing up the land that God had led them to. Abraham gave Lot the first opportunity to choose where he would settle his portion of the land, and Lot settled in the Jordan Valley, which was verdant and well watered because of the Jordan River. This was a defining moment because it not only demonstrated that Lot was a self-centered person, but it also pointed Lot in the direction of the wicked city of Sodom, which God ultimately obliterated. When many years had passed and the Israelites were making their way from their enslavement in Egypt to the land that God had given them, 
the Jordan River served as both an impediment and a pathway for them. As a consequence of mistrusting the Lord's care when he first brought them to Canaan, the Israelites had to spend 40 years wandering in the desert. Moses, meanwhile, was not permitted to enter the Promised Land and was only allowed to view it from a mountain that was located across the Jordan River before he passed away. The Israelites had been punished by spending 40 years in the desert. The Israelites of the following generation were the ones who found themselves on the banks of the Jordan River, poised and ready to cross into Canaan at last. Now the only thing that remained in their way was the Jordan River, and it had reached flood stage. Joshua, the new leader of the Israelites, obeyed the order of God and told the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant to stop in the middle of the river and stand there. They complied, and the flow of water in the Jordan River halted almost instantly, clearing the path for the people to cross it on dry land. The invasion of Canaan then got underway. The tribes of Gad and Reuben, along with half of Manasseh, settled on territory on the east bank of the Jordan River but they first assisted their fellow Israelis in capturing the Promised Land. After the Israelites miraculously made it across the Jordan River, Joshua instructed the people to construct two memorials. Twelve stones were taken from the river and placed on dry ground, and twelve stones were taken from the banks of the river and placed in the middle of the river, when the priests had been standing. Hence, the sight of God's display of might on Israel's behalf was memorialized for future generations. The Jordan River is mentioned a great number of times in the Old Testament, most frequently in accounts of conflicts and battles involving the Israelites. Gideon led the Israelites to victory in their struggle against the Midianites by seizing a vital location on the river. After some time had passed, King Saul and several of his sons were killed in a conflict that took place close to the Jordan River. In a number of additional instances, it is stated that the Jordan River was crossed in order to fight an adversary. Elisha told Naaman, a Syrian, to bathe in the Jordan River so that he could be healed of his leprosy. And Elisha also caused a sunken axe head to float on the Jordan River. These are just a few of the many instances in which the prophets Elijah and Elisha were associated with the Jordan River. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 7 to 14, we read that two prophets successfully crossed the Jordan River by supernatural powers. In the New Testament, the Jordan River played a significant part in the process of preparing people for the ministry that Jesus Christ would eventually lead. John the Baptist gave sermons frequently along the river, and he baptized those who confessed their sins and turned to God. Jesus Christ went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist, not to demonstrate that he was contrite, but rather to fully identify with us and to fulfill all righteousness. At the point where Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and God, the Father, declared his love for and pleasure in the Son. This event marked the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. But what has been recently discovered near the Jordan River that is terrifying scientists? The Dead Sea is a salty lake in southwestern Asia, with Jordan owning the eastern half and Israel owning the southern half of the western half. Israel has dominated the Palestinian West Bank, which comprises the northern half of the western coast, since the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. The Jordan River, which flows from the north into the lake, supplies the majority of the water in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has a lot of religious and biblical significance. Several tribes of Jews lived in caves near the Dead Sea throughout the time of the Bible. Archaeologists are now reassembling the scrolls piece by piece. Many believe that the biblical cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were located on the southeast side of the Dead Sea. King David, famous for defeating Goliath, sought refuge from King Saul in Ein Gedi, which is today a nature reserve near the Dead Sea. A pool of water near the Dead Sea in the biblical region of Moab, now Jordan, has assumed an unusual tint. Jordan's Ministry of Water and Irrigation Workers are taking water samples from the Red Lagoon, which is immediately on the Jordanian border. They are attempting to determine what is causing the bizarre event, which has yet to be explained. The photographs have received a great deal of attention on social media. Blood red water was one of the ten plagues God sent to Egypt's Pharaoh to release the Israelites from slavery in the Old Testament. According to the Bible, God turned the Nile's water into blood, killing the fish and making it hazardous for Egyptians to drink. 
This was the first of ten unpleasant things that transpired as a result of Pharaoh's refusal to release his Jewish slaves. On the east side of the Dead Sea is where the Blood Red Pond. This is also where the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were before God destroyed them for being wicked. Fatih al Huaymal, who is in charge of the Al Karak Council's Water and Agriculture Committee, says that the government has been asked to find out where the water is coming from. Jordan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesman, Omar Salame, says that the cause of the mysterious red water is still unknown, but there are a few reasons why a lagoon that is not connected to fresh water might change color all of a sudden. Yassin al Kazabe, who is in charge of agriculture in the southern Jordan Valley, told Roya News that this is caused by a type of bacteria and red algae that love salty water and change color when exposed to sunlight. But this doesn't explain why the water turned red all of a sudden when other pools haven't done the same thing, especially since the area is sunny almost all year long. Other officials told Israel Today that the water's iron oxide could be to blame for the strange color change. However, they did not say how the iron oxide got into the pool or why the color changed so quickly. Head of the Jordanian geologist syndicate, Sakhar al-Nusur, told Al-Gad News that people might have put things in it to make it red. A lot of Jordanians agreed with this view. They said the government was hiding a source of pollution or using the pool as a place to dump waste chemicals. In southern Israel is a salt lake called the Dead Sea. It is in the Judean Desert, which is to the east of Jordan. It was made about four million years ago and is the lowest place on earth. It is one of the saltiest places on earth to find water. It has a salinity of more than 30%, which means that its water is full of minerals. People have always said that bathing in the Dead Sea is good for your health, even though the water is so salty that it can't support marine life. People with breathing problems like cystic fibrosis seem to do better in this area because the air pressure is higher. It is also a great place to treat skin problems because of the temperature, humidity, and minerals in the water. People with knee osteoarthritis have also been said to feel less pain when they use mud packs from the Dead Sea. But the Dead Sea has shrunk a lot in recent years. Most likely, climate change is to blame. At its widest point, it is about 31 miles long and 9 miles wide. It is thought that the Dead Sea's water level has dropped more than 131 feet since the 1950s and it is still dropping at a rate of about 2 feet per year. So that was all about the video. Hope you find it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon for more updates like this. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video.